are at the Fantastic Cave in Springfield, Missouri. You're gonna love this one, lots of fun. Goes all the way back to 1862 when the dog found the cave. 1867, 12 girls came in here and explored the caves and the rest is history. This is the only cave in the United States of America or North America for that matter, that they actually drive all the tourists through the cave in these Jeeps and wagons, really super cool. You're gonna love this video, really unique. Definitely hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and let's go check out the fantastic caves in Springfield, Missouri. Here we go, you guys ready? Yes, we are. All right. Are you excited? I'm excited, yeah. Awesome. Let's do it, let's check out let's these caves. It. Let's go caving, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a great video for you today on how to have fun outdoors. That's right, the Fantastic Caves full walkthrough and tour. If you're not familiar with our channel, please subscribe. Give this uh, video a like so we can get it out to everyone. Fantastic Caverns is amazing. If you haven't, check out our website, How to Have Fun Outdoors, Facebook, Instagram. You got to check it out and take a look at these other great cavern cave videos we have on this channel. You're going to love it, including this one down in DR. And how about this one with our sister channel, How to Have Fun Cruising with the Crystal Caves down in Bermuda. But today, is all about the fantastic caves in Springfield, Missouri. Believe it or not, these are show caves and they go back and there's so much history in these caves. It's the only cave in North America to offer a completely ride through tour which lasts 55 minutes and is held with a Jeep drawn tram. That's right, a Jeep drawn tram. The tram drives along a path left behind by ancient underground river. Ooh. Believe it or not, it was discovered by John Knox way back with his hunting dog in 1862. He didn't want to share it with anyone. He was afraid the Union and the Confederate governments would use it as a possible hiding place, so he kept it quiet all the way into the 1860s. Believe it or not, back then, the Women's Athletic Club explored the cave. 12 ladies are considered to be the first explorers of the cave. Since then, they carved their names into the rock as graffiti and mentioned it in an article published in the Springfield Tri-Weekly Patriot newspaper. The cave was renamed the Fantastic Caverns in the 1950s. The cave was owned by the Ku Klux Klan in 1924 to 1930, as crazy as that sounds. And the caverns were also used as a speakeasy during the Prohibition. So everybody was hiding out in these caves. The caverns also hosted music concerts in the 50s and 60s, and shows were broadcasted on radio in the 1970s. Just for the specifics of the cave, that's right, the inside temperature is about 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 C year round. And in winter and fall, Billboard advertised the cave is a warm 60 degrees. While in the summer and the spring, the billboards advertise the caverns to be a cool 60 degrees. The cave hosts over over 100,000 visitors a year. So let's go, let's check out these awesome, fantastic caves. Aliche, I just wanna let you know, you're not really sneaking the dogs out of the hotel when little Gypsy has got her head poked out. What Hello. the heck? What is going on, Aliche? <laughs> you gotta do better than that. I will try. <laughs> okay, come on. So Gypsy and Rocky were able to find this cave with the help of Aliche, and Aliche was super excited to go check this out. That's right, check a look, take a look at this visitor center from 1978, and that's right, you can ride through these caves all year long. The price on it, $31.79, tax included per person, and probably one of the most impressive parts of this cave, believe it or not, is that's right, the gift shop. I mean, the gift shop was amazing. It was like the Walmart of all kinds of really super cool stuff. And we had a great time, a lot of history there, a lot of great gifts. They've got their famous popcorn, I guess they've been doing for years. And as you can see, we were having some fun. So let's go ahead and get started with the tour guide. Pretty cool. Uh, Missouri has so many caves. How many caves in Missouri? 7,300 that we know of so far. Wow. Now that is way behind. It says 6,000. That says 6,000. But if we would update it six months, it'd be wrong. Wow. So is they're, this, they're is, finding them all the time. 
Is this one of the best ones here, you think? Well, of course. <laughs> it's, the best, it's the best one in this corner of the city. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now, how long have you been doing? It's the only one where you drive through, right? It is the only one in the Americas. There's oh. only four in the world. Uh, the other three, there's one in France, Barbados, and Yugoslavia. Wow. So if you're going to go there, you better get started. <laughs> it's a long drive. <laughs> now, when, did they, when did they open this? This cave? Yeah. 1867. And when did they start driving through it? 60s. The 60s. 1960s. That is awesome. I think we've got a tour coming up. All right, let's do it. All right, let's go. Yellow ticket. One drive through cage in the Americas. All right. You know why? We are the only drive through cave in the Americas. But there are three others in the world. There's one in France, one in Barbados, and Yugoslavia. Now as we go through the cave, get your cameras out. We encourage you to take all of the pictures you would like, but please do not touch the rock or the stone. We've got oil on our hands. It rubs off and that's going to stunt the growth and damage the formations. A lot of caves you see. Now when you've got your tickets, they put them in a little packet. If you would please hold that packet up we want to make sure we get everybody. You want to go gather out the packet? Where are you from again? Israel, Italy. Where? Italy, Israel. Israel. Welcome. <laughs> okay. Super cool, huh? Wow. It's like a Disney ride. <laughs> sure we're not at Walt Disney? <laughs> wow. Our photo taken next. All right. That way, if you fall out of the tram, we've got your picture for the milk cart. Oh, uh, thanks, God. In three, two, one. Thank you. Uh, uh, now, uh, there are going to be a couple. I don't think I have to worry about Okay, spots. folks, we have another low spot. Maybe I can say lower spot. Okay. <laughs> wow. Now, we're going to go through a beautiful limestone cave, but keep this in the back of your mind. Everything that you're going to see was directly or indirectly caused or shaped by water. You know, water comes through that ceiling, dissolving minerals on its way through the limestone. The droplets of mineral water are going to hang on the ceiling, and they're going to start making these little formations. Now, we call these soda straws. They get that name because they are long, thin wall, and hollow, just like a drinking straw. Now they're going to continue to grow, then they're going to start clogging up, and as they do so, that's their transition into a full-grown stalactite. So just think of these as baby stalactites. You know, stalactites, the ones that hang on the ceiling, hanging on tight. And then, of course, we have the ones coming up from the floor. They might make it to the ceiling someday. Stalag might. Now, beside us, you may notice a little garden bed. That's the last of several garden beds from back in the 1930s. That was the Depression. Back then, the cave business wasn't making any money, so the cave owner had to do something to bring in some income. They raised little button-top mushrooms. They would harvest the mushrooms and sell them. That helped bring in some much needed income. Now we're heading into the cave. Got a lot of formations. We'll talk about those as we get there. Uh, if you have any questions during the tour, we're going to have a couple of spots where we're going to open it up for questions. 
So let's go see the cave. soda straws here they're a little longer they're starting their transition into a full-grown stalactite that's with the water dripping straight down now the ones in the middle are a little different those are cave curtains and cave draperies with those formations that droplet of mineral water will run along the angle of the ceiling depositing minerals it makes these little uh, white mineral tracks, and that's how they get their unusual shape. Now, you may notice we do have water dripping. That's mineral water. That mineral water is leaving just a little bit behind, then it's dripping onto this stalagmite, depositing minerals and helping it grow. Now, since they're both growing, it's very probable that someday they're gonna meet in the middle. They're going to grow together and become one. Now, when that happens, we're going to call it a cave column or a cave pillar. But don't hold your breath. That's going to take a while. You know, the scientists tell us that the average growth rate for these formations is currently about one cubic inch volume every 100 years. Let's make sense out of that. Let's pretend that we have a little ice cube. That's about a cubic inch. We're going to set it on top of that stalagmite and let it melt. The film of water from that melting ice cube would be equal to about a century worth of growth. So you can kind of imagine it's going to take a while for those to grow together. Now that's water coming through this porous limestone ceiling making the stalactites and stalagmites, but this is a limestone cave. If you look over here on the passenger side, you may notice this limestone is in layers. Well, at one time, this limestone was sediment on the bottom of an ancient ocean. So those are just layers of ocean sediment that have compacted into a nice limestone. Water can come out between those layers. You may notice over here, the water coming out between the layers flowed down the wall and it's set up. And we call that flow stone because it kind of looks like that stone's flowing down the wall. Juno, we're out hunting. 
Well, Juno takes off chasing the varmint, heads down the hill, chases that varmint through a little hole in the side of the rock bluff. Now, Mr. Knox finally got his dog out of there. Then he took all the brush he could find, covered the hole up, and didn't tell anybody about the cave. It was 1862. The American Civil War was already underway, and he knew that if either army heard about the cave, they just might confiscate for their own use to stay quiet. Now, by 1867, the war was over. Things were calming down. He put a one ad in the Springfield newspaper looking for volunteers to come and explore the cave. Well, that ad was answered by members of the Springfield Athletic Club. Now, when they showed up, he was a little bit surprised. It turned out that the club membership was 12 young teenage girls. Yeah, they were the first ones to explore this cave. We'll show you where their names are on the wall. Of course, when the girls came through, they didn't have nice cave lights. When they came through, it was dark in here. This is natural cave light. All they had were candles and lanterns. Now, this went on until 1887. That's when we had a steam engine running a generator. It went into operation providing electricity. And the cave owner went out and bought a whole bunch of those newfangled Thomas Edison light bulbs. People were coming to this cave for miles around, not necessarily to see the cave, they wanted to see those new light bulbs they get here in the valley.
All right, Michael, great job. You were one of the best tour guides ever in these caverns. What'd you think, Alice? Oh, a lot of great information and you had fun. Yeah. <laughs> what would you give Michael on a Discovery Bus rating? I would do five Discovery Buses. Five Discovery Buses, and we hope everybody at home enjoyed this video. Alice, take it away. Well, I hope that you guys enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button and thank you so much for watching. And how do we have to fun? See us. Oh, oh, that's so yeah, true. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> how do we have fun? Outdoors. Outdoors. All right. <laughs> Tommy T, that's why you wanted me to go to the bathroom? So you had time for popcorn? Come on. The lady bought it for me. She was nice. It yeah, was nice of her. sure. The lady bought it for you, right? Yeah, come on. <laughs> You can see we had a great time. Alice loved the caves. Uh, everybody that uh, actually was around us very much enjoyed the caves. It was a great time. And these caves, uh, like I mentioned earlier, have so much history. It's super cool what they've done since the 1960s. In fact, uh, they added cave lighting in 19... Uh, 70 um, and with that lighting system it was actually upgraded to LED lighting in 2017. The Campbell family has done an amazing job. They managed the property since 1966 and then in 1992 they actually purchased that's right fantastic caverns. So overall we would highly recommend it. We give these caverns a five discovery bus so if you're in that Springfield Missouri on your way to Branson definitely check it out. Also check out the world's largest gift shop that's right that's not too far from there and if you're not familiar with our channel definitely check out some of these videos like prehistoric paddlefish from missouri we've got cool rv videos we do all kinds of crazy like this global expedition vehicle seven hundred thousand dollar patagonia prevos that's right two and a half million dollars we've got cool videos like the bermuda triangle nightmare that's right we got in the 27 way 27 foot waves on a cruise ship Wait till you see the water go over the 13th floor. We do cruise ship reviews. We do shore excursion reviews. We take you all over the Caribbean, all over the world for that matter. And then we also have a bunch of tip videos. That's right. So 20 things to see in Bermuda. You're going to love that with some secret spots, secret beaches, snorkeling in Salt Springs, Florida, Mackinac Island, just boated number one island. That's right. We've known it for a long time. It's a great place to go. Check it out in Kennedy Space Center. How about 10 tips for your next visit there? But overall, we hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button so more people can hear, uh, learn about the fantastic caverns. And thank you so much for watching. How to have fun outdoors.